Uh, sorry. <laughs> Kennedy, how are you? I'm fine, brother. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Okay, let me just set up my, I think, my microphone so that we can have better audio. Okay. Okay, can you can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Ah, okay. Uh, so I had asked with uh, two new members who have got um, uh, let's see. We have uh, Katungole Makarios and yes, yes. Emmanuel Ebong. Okay. Can you guys introduce yourselves, or if anyone knows them, can can you quickly introduce them? Uh, who they are, where the fellowship. Uh, I know Macarius. Okay. Yeah. So he's my Obi. Uh, from Bugema. Uh, old so, Obi meaning older brother. Yeah. <laughs> Both, older brother, uh, Obi. <laughs> okay. Uh, so he's currently living in Romania. So. Ah yes, yes. Joining us. In... All right. Uh, yes, okay, Ivana. We'll start, we'll start in, in in two minutes. Okay. Ivana. <laughs> Huh? Okay, let me start there. Okay. 
Um, so I think we can we can start. Um, So let us let us pray. Okay, but okay. Um our Father Nevin, we thank you for the blessing of life that you've given us. Uh, with you are studying uh, more about the last day church. Uh, may you give us understanding and uh, strength in these trying times that we are soon to see. Uh, may you prepare us for the work uh, that is ahead of us uh, and give us wisdom that is have given uh, those who have gone before us to spread the word uh, of your soon return and of your love. And through it, may we be sanctified we thank you for this and many blessings. Amen. 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 Yes. How are you, my brother Katongo? Makarios. Fine. How are you? Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you okay. too. Okay. Um, yes, yes, yes. So uh, yesterday we, we were discussing on chapter four, uh, which is basically <clears throat> discussing uh, about the last day church. Uh, the relation how we should relate with the uh, with the church authorities uh, and what is our duty as, as church members or as officers if elected to be so um, how the church is going to be affected by future events and how we ought to relate uh, with the church during those times uh, so we had discussed uh, much of it we were left with um, uh, just a few uh, sub headings. So yesterday we left here uh, a statement by William uh, C. White. So we start from here and then we go and finish off this chapter. Um, so today it will be a short time uh, since uh, some have already um, have already been to church <laughs> and some I believe. Uh, are starting to go to church so because of the time difference. But anyway, uh, we will we'll finish off this chapter and hopefully tomorrow. So I pick this. Uh, and hopefully tomorrow we'll start on chapter five. So reading, uh, it says uh, this is a statement uh, uh, written by William C. White, one of Ellen White's sons. Uh, she he says, I told her, uh, Miss Linda Scott. How mother regarded the experience of the remnant church and of her positive teaching that God would not permit his denomination to so fully apostatize that there will be the coming out of another church. Uh, so he's emphasizing uh, what uh, uh, Sister White has already uh, also emphasized that God will not permit uh, this denomination to so fully apostatize. Uh, Full apostasy is when we accept the teachings of of, um, of Babylon. What you identify uh, full Babylon is may mostly there are two doctrines, which is the first one, uh, the immortality of the soul, and then of uh, of Sunday observance as a Sabbath. So those God will not permit them, will not permit that apostasy to be taught uh, in the remnant church. Uh, which means there might be other apostasies, but there are no reason. Uh, for us to come out and say, ah, no, the church is now Babylon, therefore we need to come out of the church. Uh, so this is to give us an assurance that uh, the church may not be perfect, but it is the object that God has chosen uh, to finish Where's the work. Uncle? Uh, and in so, doing, uh, in so doing, we need to keep uh, things in proper perspective, um, knowing that we are heaven to gain and the hell to shun. Um, so continuing, uh, I'll read uh, the next subject, which is a uh, spiritual revival uh, still needed. Okay. Uh, so one day at noon, I was writing of the work that might have been done uh, at the last general conference in 1901, if the men in positions of trust had followed the will and the way of God. 
those who have had great light have not walked in the light. The meeting was closed and the break was not was not made. Men did not humble themselves before the Lord as they should have done, and the Holy Spirit was not imparted. I had written thus far when I lost consciousness, and I seemed to be witnessing a scene in Battle Creek. We were assembled in the auditorium of the tabernacle. Prayer was offered, a hymn was sung, and prayer was again offered. Most earnest supplication was made to God. The meeting was marked by the presence of the Holy Spirit. No one seemed to be too proud to make heartfelt confession, and those who led in this work were the ones who had influence, but had not before had courage to confess their sins. There was rejoicing such as never before had had in the tabernacle. Then I aroused from my unconsciousness, and for a while I could not think where I was. My pen was still in my hand, and the words were spoken to me. This might have been. Oh. Senda gire host ya lazewa. Host ya kacha kafunye mulo za ka challenge, kini ko challenge. But I hope he's coming back. Omwana la bika asise waya. Ali katumulinde. Katumulinde o katuno tulabe. Can you hear me, Kennedy? Yes, I hear you. Yes, I hear. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry, I I somewhat lost connection. Sorry. Okay, so <clears throat> I was reading uh, the paragraph which was speaking of the spiritual revival still needed. Uh, okay, so I was on the last paragraph, I think, when I lost connection. So I, I will reread that one. Um, okay, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, there was rejoicing such as never before had been heard in the tabernacle. Um, then I aroused from my unconsciousness and for a while could not think where I was. My pen was still in my hand and the words were spoken to me. This might have been. All this the Lord was waiting to do for his people. All heaven was waiting to be gracious. I thought of where we might have been a thorough work been done at the last general conference. I have been deeply impressed by scenes that have recently passed before me in the night season. There seemed to be a great movement, a work of revival, going forward in many places. Our people were moving into line, responding to God's call. Um, so this was the message that was delivered at the general conference in 1918. So uh, a vision was shown uh, where they were, uh, God was revealing that we could have, our way could have been advanced more had men had forsaken their sins um, uh, and come to God with humble hearts. But, uh, but she was shown that there's going to be a, another great spiritual revival. Uh, uh, not just for at this time, but even uh, at the end of time, uh, there's going to be a great revival, uh, such as never was since the time, since since before, uh, where each church member uh, will consecrate themselves and help with themselves uh, and bring themselves to God, uh, and the, the outpouring of the latter rain uh, will be upon the people uh, to finish the work, and this will allow uh, then the proclamation of uh, the fourth angel's message of Revelation chapter 18, uh, which is basically uh, the re-preaching of the three angels' messages. 
uh, end that will give uh, that will be the last warning that will be given to the world uh, before the close of probation. So uh, the call is upon us as individuals uh, to make things right with God uh, so that when, when, when the latter rain is poured, uh, it is also poured upon us. Uh, and when the angel of Ezekiel chapter 9, uh, as we've read before, who moves about putting God still on the forehead uh, of those that shall be saved, that he may not pass us uh, because we did not prepare ourselves to meet God. So may God help us. I don't know if there's anyone who wants to make a comment this far or any addition or question. Okay. If there's none, I'll continue reading. Uh, the next subheading says the patience of God with his people. The church has failed, sadly failed, to meet the expectations of the of her Redeemer, and yet the Lord does not withdraw himself from his people. He bears with them still, not because of any goodness found in them, but that his name may not be dishonored before the enemies of truth and righteousness, that the satanic agencies, agencies may not triumph in the destruction of God's people. He has borne long with their waywardness, unbelief and folly. Ah, sorry, let me read that again. He has borne long with their waywardness, unbelief and folly. With wonderful forbearance and compassion, he has disciplined them. If they will heed his instruction, he will cleanse away their perverse sentences, saving them with an everlasting salvation and making them eternal monuments of the power of his grace. We should remember that the church and civil and defective though it be is the only object on earth on which christ destroys his supreme regard he is constantly watching it with solid uh, <clears throat> solicitude and is strengthening it by his holy uh, holy spirit so again just like god was patient with the children of israel uh, though they apostatized though they were adulterous uh, worshiping idols even uh soon after they had seen the end of god uh, uh destroying the egyptians two months later they were worshiping a golden cow uh, as if uh, the cloud had disappeared the cloud was still there the pillar of fire was still there by night they could see god's presence uh, physically and spiritually they could see that god was amongst them but even then they made a golden cow uh, uh, but God was still patient with them uh, because he had brought them out of Egypt and he would not put his name in this retreat uh, because of certain elements like Torah, Tatan, and Akan uh, and others who uh, dragged the church in the mud. But God will see his church through. Though it has got its, 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 its fault, uh, which we speak again, we should always remember that God still is going to use this church uh, <clears throat> uh, to finish finish the work, so so, so this this somehow uh, gives me a hope and courage that uh, sometimes we are disheartened by the things that we read that are happening uh, perhaps uh, in in our ch local churches in our church leaders uh, some of the issues that we hear they are they are they are discouraging but when we read such words we know that God is still in control of the church. Uh, and it, it takes away our mind uh, from men uh, and, and put our mind on God because this assures us that we as, 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 as humans, uh, we are just part of, of, of the administration, but the real leader of the church are not the, it's not the GC, uh, it's not the local conference, but it is God himself uh, and he will see uh, the church through for, his, for, for righteousness sake and for his name's sake. Uh, so for me, every time when we participate uh, in, in church uh, things, just remember uh, that God's name is at stake. Uh, our salvation is also at stake. So God is going to do his part. Yeah, so as for me, am I going to be the part that put God's name in that or do the part which exalts God's name? 
So may God help us as we ponder upon this thought. Uh, any comments? Kennedy, you're awfully quiet today. Yes. Uh, all right. I just wanted to comment. Yeah. Um, yeah I think we, like, is you said we can see the long suffering of god um how god loves us uh like but it's also one thing that we learn in god's long suffering uh it's not long suffering so that we can die like as we are sinners as we are uh but he is like god is long suffering uh extending his mercy and like doing everything possible that he can so that we can be saved. Like this statement he says, with wonderful forbearance and conversion, he has disciplined them. If they will heed his instruction, he will cleanse away their previous tendency, saving them with an everlasting salvation and making them eternal monuments of the power of his grace. So uh, this is God's desire. Sometimes we take his long suffering and patience for granted and we take maybe that long suffering, maybe as a time maybe to, to be rebellious or time to indulge in like in sin. Um, but if we really, underst really understand the reason why the Lord had to be so much forbearing with the children of Israel, like in the wilderness, his desire was that they would come back to their senses and worship in spirit and truth. And that can also be the same with us now. Uh, we just need to remember that this patience of God that he has with us is for us to come back to our senses, it's for us to seek him while he may be found so that we can become eternal monuments of the power of his grace. So we can see uh, the bright side uh, on the patience of God, especially if we try to understand the object of God and what God really requires of us and why that patience may help us. So, yeah, just need God's grace, God's mercy, so that God may help us to, to repent and to look up to Him uh, so that we can be partakers. Um, of you, glory. Amen. Amen. Uh, even Paul uh, argues that uh, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yes, I see, Kennedy. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? May abound? But no. Um, but grace uh, establish, establishes uh, the law. So, yes, Kennedy, you want to say something? Okay, thank you, Elder. Um, I'd like to make a comment on the last paragraph of this caption we've been reading. Uh, I think it has come to answer uh, one of the big questions which may be ringing in our minds. The church uh, appearing to have failed the expectation of Christ, but yet still holding on to it. Uh, one time we were in a discussion at home and the, one of the students asked, but if uh, God has a big and entire universe full of creatures, uh, actually beyond our imagination, why would he be so much interested in a small earth with even individuals who are subordinate and uh, <laughs> disobedient and trying to Every time he tries to bring them unto himself, they are just running away. Now here I think the selected message is coming on to, to answer one of my disturbing questions where he says we should remember that the church, enfeebled and effective though it be, is the only object on earth on which Christ is told his supreme regard. So now that means we are involved in all what we may treasure so much in this life. Christ is looking for only one important thing on this planet, 
and that is his judge. I think now it brings us to, uh, to the understanding of how valuable Christ takes his church to be. And whatever work he has bestowed onto us, I think it should be the primary focus of every intention in our lives. Thank you, Doc. Yes, amen. Um, so that, that question of, of why would God uh, concentrate on such a small, small earth, actually in Isaiah, the Bible says the earth is nothing, uh, less than not, nothing. It's like a drop uh, in a bucket. So, uh, so why would God concentrate much on it? Uh, that one is a lesson uh, on its own. Um, yeah. We will maybe discuss uh, why why is God so much interested uh, on earth? Uh, in other words, why was man created? Uh, we were created to suffer like this. Uh, this whole this this whole idea. Uh, centered on the whole issue of the great controversy motive. Um, it has to do with, with the, the war that happened in heaven uh, between God and, and, and Lucifer, uh, who then became the devil and Satan. So it, it's, a, it's a big issue uh, where human beings uh, became part of, uh, part of this war uh, between Christ, between good and evil. Yeah. Um, so the plan of salvation, um, it is to redeem men uh, and, uh, and also uh, to vindicate God's righteousness uh, unto the uh, fallen angels and unto the fallen world, uh, or basically unto the universe. So there's much to learn from, 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 from that statement. Uh, I think we will discuss, we will discuss it um, in, the, in the days to come after we finish this book. Okay. Uh, I believe it might be the first lesson that we need to discuss the great controversy. Yes, sir. Why are we yes, in this mess? Sir. Yes, why are we in this mess and where we are going? Um, why we are, why there will be a mark of the beast? Why there is the seal of God? All these things. Uh, so if sometimes we miss the big picture and concentrate on the small things, we might miss uh, the whole uh, gist of the plan of salvation. Okay, so thank you for that comment. Uh, uh, moving on to the next uh, it says God works with those who are faithful to him uh, reading the Lord Jesus will always have a chosen people to save him when the Jewish people rejected Christ the Prince of Life he took from them the kingdom of God and gave it to the Gentiles God will continue to work on this principle with every branch of his work when a church proves unfaithful to the word of the Lord Whatever their position may be, however high and sacred their calling, the Lord can no longer work with them. Others are then chosen to bear important responsibilities. But if these in turn do not purify their lives from every wrong action, if they do not establish pure and holy principles in all their borders, then the Lord will grievously afflict and humble them, and unless they repent, will remove them from their place and make them a reproach. Um, so this reminds me of, of the parable of the talents. If you remember that uh, uh, there was one man um, and he gave uh, talents to his three servants. To one was given uh, five talents, to the other was given two talents, to the other was given one talent. And the one who had five talents worked and multiplied those talents by two until they became 10. And the next one worked and multiplied the talents and they became four. But the one who was given one uh, said, what is one against two? What is one against five? And then he buried this talent. And when the master is returned and they asked him, what did you do with the talent, the money that I gave you? Could you not have uh, put it to you, sir, so that it might have gained interest instead of burying it? Uh, and in, in Christ, of the lesson, I my comments that uh, these were the spiritual gifts uh, that are given uh, to each individual in church. Remember when you are born again when you receive the gift of the holy spirit you are also given uh, the gift of the spirit which vary from individual to individual and if you compare yourself and say ah no i'm not a preacher uh what can i do uh to work in, in the road business? ah no uh, i'm not a teacher what what can i do ah no uh, i'm not interested uh with material things how can i help the gospel 
and then you bury your talents. Uh, th those gifts that were given to you will be taken away and be given to someone else who will multiply them. So each spiritual gift that we receive, we are to use it faithfully uh, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our heart, <coughs> so that uh, even when, if need be, those gifts will multiply as we work in the field. Gifts will not just come and multiply when we bury them. Uh, so this is a reminder to us what, that whatever we do, uh, let's, let's do it with all our might, uh, with all our power, with all our strength, uh, and God will multiply those talents as we as need be. As need be. Uh, actually, in Corinthians, Paul says, as the Spirit uh, so with us, uh, as the Holy Spirit deems necessary, the spiritual gifts will increase. But each and every one of us has a spiritual gift that we need to able. use uh, to advance the work of the gospel, uh, for the edification of the church. Um, so I know that uh, I have my gifts, you have your gifts, each and every one of us here have their spiritual gifts. So the call is, let's use them uh, wherever we are. Let's uh, brighten the corners where we are by using the gifts that were given. And as we continue to work, they will be multiplied. And, and if we don't do that, God will simply take that gift away from us and give it to someone else. And unless we don't repent, then we shall be lost. Uh, something which even happened to the gift of prophecy. Uh, it came to William Foy, as and Force, but they rejected, and then it was given to the weakest of the weak, uh, whose book we are now reading today. Hey, so it's the same thing ma. that has been happening over and over. Uh, so may God help us to realize what we need to do and to do it faithfully and trust in Him. If there's anyone who wants to make a comment, yeah. Yeah, there is something I wanted to add on. Uh, go ahead. You can hear me. Yes, yes. Okay. A few minutes ago, you you made a statement that uh, God seemed to be interested in this small planet. Uh, indeed, he is because he has always. According to what we know, starting from the creation, we are really different from other planets, from other worlds. Let me use the word worlds. And the church must understand that we are different from any other thing God has ever created. I understand from Isaiah that the devil was created with wisdom and beauty. But he lacked something that we have, the image of God. Now, he has or he had the character of God when he was in heaven, not the likeness. Am I right? Uh, continue. We are listening. I need to get that answer before I continue. Am I right? <laughs> uh, you said character and likeness, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so we human beings are created uh, with, we are creatures who are created in God's image, which is his character. Um, in that, those words, character and likeness in Genesis chapter Two, uh, or in Genesis chapter one, verse 20, 26, uh, in the image of God created him, male and female created him. Let us make men in our own image after our own likeness. So <clears throat> there is those words are sort of they are sort of used juxtaposingly uh, to mean the the image of God in terms of His character, um, the likeness of His character. We are not exactly like God in terms of physical form. But the image was like the, the character of God. We, we had that one. So angels, they are different uh, uh, creatures in terms of form, uh, like from human beings. They are 
they they can change form they can be like humans they can be spirit they can be lightning but they are also uh, creatures who have got a character because they can make decisions uh, just like we see Lucifer decided uh, to oppose God just like humans we also created uh, with the power of choice so he also had uh, he was actually Lucifer means light bearer uh, he was the one who, who was the go between uh, God and the angels so he's the one who, who, who exalted God uh not only by by his duty uh, but by his character also so you can see the similarity between angels and humans that we they also had the image of god just like uh man was when he was created they also had the image of god but in terms of um form i don't i don't know what you mean when you say likeness i uh, i am assuming i'm assuming you mean physical form uh they are a bit different but in terms of character we were both created with the image of god there is a book i read in seven joints so she said man was to resemble god both in outward appearance and in character i don't know which book it is i think the next session i'll get the name and the page and the paragraph have you ever read of that Uh, yeah, I, 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 I know the issue which you are, you, you are, you are referring to. Um, like I said, it might be a, a lesson that may be needed to be. It yeah. might be a lesson so, that you need to do. Oh, oh. So now let me continue with the comment. Eh? That was Thank just you, uh, a branch off. Yeah, so in these last days, we really need to share what we have. God gave you a gift. He gave me a gift. They are truly different from what you have because you understand the verse says to one and then to another. So God made this in a way that we all get gifts different from each other, but to benefit the church as a whole. If I use my gift for the benefit of the church, if you do the same and we all do the same, we will really benefit. And this is the time when we really need to do that. Because the devil has also counterfeited those gifts. So by the time, by, by when, we, when we use them, we are actually accomplishing two wars in the same time. We are doing the work of God. And then we are teaching those that are following the kind of the counterfeit of the devil that is wrong. Otherwise, in other words, we are we are rebuking what the devil is doing. Let me give an example. For example, the gift of tongues. If my brother Kennedy comes and speaks in Korean now, which I believe he doesn't know, but <laughs> but if he comes and he preaches in, in in Korean right now, and then we have someone to to tell us that really that is Korean, and he has to interpret that. Now, if one of my brothers from uh, one of the Sunday churches comes and speaks whatever he speaks. Kennedy is actually accomplishing two things at a go. He's preaching to us, that's number one. And he is proving to us that the other person is actually speaking gibberish. So when we use the gifts that God gave us in these last days, we are, we are deleting the work the devil has done. And at the same time, we are writing God's work. So it's really important. That's all I had to say. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that comment. Yeah. So <clears throat> basically, yeah, our lives, basically, when we live a righteous life, they are just but a rebuke uh, unto the wicked, uh, even without saying a word, like you're saying, 
that whatever we do uh, in, in, in God's work, it is like a double-edged sword. Uh, its mission and the other uh, unintended mission. Um, uh, continuing reading, uh, the next, next paragraph it says, judged by the light bestowed. Uh, <coughs> in the balances of the sanctuary, uh, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is to be weighed. She will be judged by the privileges and advantages that she had. Uh, if her spiritual experience does not correspond to the advantages that Christ, at infinite cost, is bestowed on her, if the blessings conferred uh, have not qualified her to do the work entrusted to her, or her will be pronounced descendants found wanting. Uh, by the light bestowed, the opportunities given will she be judged. Solemn admonitions of warning manifest. <clears throat> solemn admonitions of warning manifest in the destruction of dearly cherished uh, facilities. Uh, this is like giving an example: the Battle Creek Sanitarium, the largest and best known Adventist institution in the world, burned to the ground on February 18, 1902. This was followed by the destruction of the Review and Herald Publishing Association, also by fire on December 30, 1902. Um, so, so let me read again. Solemn admonitions of warning manifest in the destruction of daily church facilities um, for service. Say to us, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first work. Uh, this reminds me of uh, the fires that took America about uh, three to four weeks ago uh, in California. Uh, there were some, some, some. Some, some, some photos shared about the general conference about uh, some of our facilities that bent uh, in that area. I think uh, an elementary school was bent and some other uh, facility, I'm not sure what it was, I'm forgetting. Uh, but the only thing that was not bent was uh, Ellen White House uh, in that area. Everything else, uh, this, the elementary school and some other facility, they were bent to the ground. Uh, I'm not sure if that has got any significance to do with this, but I'm just giving an example uh, um, that indeed sometimes these things they happen uh, to wake us up from our slumber, uh, like the or like what she says, they for service to say to us, remember from whence thou art fallen and repent and do uh, the first works. Unless the church, which is now being lived with her own backsliding, shall repent and be converted. She will eat of the fruit of her own doing until she has a bow, until she shall abhor so. When she resists the evil and chooses the good, when she seeks God with all humility and reaches a high calling in Christ, standing on the platform of eternal truth, and by faith laying hold upon the attainments prepared for her, she will be healed. She will appear in her God-given simplicity and pur purity, separate from earthly entanglements, showing that the truth is made here free indeed. Then her members will be indeed will indeed be the chosen of God, his representatives. Uh, so this is so this is an instruction which is given uh, basically to um, <clears throat> the body, the church body, uh, the decisions that you will make as a group, uh, how it, they affect uh, the whole group. Uh, it's not speaking on on, on individual level as they say. For example, if we, if we as a church accept, um, let's say, same-sex unions, uh, then judgment will visit, uh, will visit the church. Uh, if we as a church accept uh, some other false doctrines, uh, then uh, the judgment will come. And if we as a church uh, not do what we are supposed to be doing, or we are in a state of slumber, uh, then judgment uh, will visit the church. Same thing uh, which was happening. Uh, on the children of Israel, uh, the judgments were visiting the children of Israel uh, because they, as a group, uh, had rejected or had acted uh, in a way which was contrary to the expectations of God. Uh, but individuals uh, who uh, keep the faith uh, and are faithful, uh, those may not uh, face those uh, punishments. Uh, same thing. Uh, even if you look at the children of Israel, uh, even though they made the golden calf, there was a few that there were others who did not. 
and those uh, that worship the golden calf, 3,000 men uh, were killed that very same night. Um, so it, it is a reminder that uh, as individuals, we better err on the side of caution. It's better to do that which the Bible seems to suggest than to do that men seem to suggest, which is contrary to what the Bible seems to suggest. I'm using the word seems to suggest because sometimes we call these controversial issues. Uh, so it, it is better uh, Mommy, not to do that which the Bible says don't do than to do it uh, giving an argument saying, well, it's not clear enough uh, whether the Bible is condemning or not. So better err on the side of caution than go on the side, uh, which is just like the other angels that remained in heaven. Uh, inspiration says some of them remained uh, Actually, most of them, if not all, they remained, not because they saw that Lucifer was guilty, but they said, okay, uh, in the meantime, we'll stay on this side. And if in the long run, Lucifer, you are proven to be right, then we'll join you. But in the meantime, we'll better err on the side of caution. And soon enough, uh, Lucifer revealed himself, uh, and it proved that the decision that they made was actually right. Uh, actually, when you read further, uh, in spiritual gifts, it says, at first, Lucifer had managed to convince about half of the angels. Uh, but when the father had a meeting, uh, that's when the, the ratio was switched to third. third. Uh, so they said, okay, okay, we hear the arguments that are coming from Lucifer, and we hear the arguments that are coming from God. So we'd rather stay with God, not because we see that is right or that is wrong, or we see that Lucifer is wrong or is right, but we'd rather stay on the safe side. Uh, so my, my, my encouragement as we enter into these trying times, many false doctrines that will come, that shall blow the church, um, it is better to always err on the side of caution. Uh, rather be labeled a fool uh, than to be, uh, to realize that you were wrong at the end when it might be already too, too late. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone who wants to, to make a comment. Okay, so uh, let me let me read further because we are left with about ten minutes, uh, so that we can finish. Uh, we just left with three subheadings. Okay, <clears throat> this one says the history. Okay, sorry. Uh, this one says Israel's history, owning to us. In these last days, God's people will be exposed to the very same dangers as the ancient Israel. Those who will not receive the warnings that God gives will fall into the same peril as did ancient Israel and come short of entering into rest through unbelief. Ancient Israel suffered calamities on account of their unsanctified hearts and unsubmitted will. Their final rejection as a nation was a result of their own unbelief, self-confidence, impenitence, blindness of mind and hardness of heart. In their history, we have a danger signal listed before us. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the Lord. Okay, so again, it is emphasizing uh, <clears throat> how the examples of Israel, Mira, uh, the church in the last days. Um, uh, the second last paragraph, uh, it says, the church militant is not the church triumphant and earth is not heaven. The church is composed of erring, imperfect men and women who are but learners in the school of Christ to be trained, disciplined, educated for this life and for the future immortal life. Some people seem to think that upon entering the church, they will have their expectations fulfilled and meet only those who are pure and perfect. They are zealous in their faith, and when they see faults in church members, they say, we left the world in order to have no association with evil characters, but the evil is here also. And they ask, as did the servants in the parables, from whence then has it tell? But we need to be thus disappointed but we need not be thus disappointed, for the Lord is not warranted us in coming to the conclusion that the church is perfect 
and all our zeals will not be successful in making the church militant as pure as the church triumphant. So again, it is emphasizing uh, the issue that, uh, of course, it is giving a one of the perfect examples that many people who come to church newly baptized, we, their expectations um, in, in the reality, sometimes they, it's like north and south. Uh, they, they always say these things, ah, but we thought the church, you church people um, were an example of Christ. Uh, but this is just showing us that no, um, the church is a hospital. We are all sick and our sicknesses are different. Uh, and our, our discharge dates are also different. The, our treatment plans are also different. But the end goal is to make sure that we are all healed. So let let not the one who is suffering from flu uh, say to the one who is suffering from COVID, you are also because even the flu might kill you. Uh, so may God help us as we as we think upon these things and how we should relate with one another in church, knowing that uh, we are not perfect as much as the next person is not, but through helping each other, strengthening each other, praying for one another, uh, we can achieve uh, that goal. We can help each other spiritually to grow and to work um, in, in hustling Christ coming. And reading the last paragraph, and then we can comment. Um, the work is soon to close. The members of the church militant who have proved faithful will become church triumphant. The life of Christ was a life charged with the divine message of the love of God, and he longed intensely to impart this love to others in a rich measure. Compassion beamed from his countenance, and his conduct was characterized by grace, humility, truth, and love. Every member of his church militant must manifest the same qualities if you would join the church triumphant. Uh, again, he is emphasizing how we need how we ought to, to, to relate with one another, um, how we should conduct ourselves, uh, characterized by grace, humility, truth, and love. Uh, and uh, the difference between the church militant and the church triumphant, simply the church militant, this is the church that is working um, to preach the gospel before the close of profession. And then the church triumphant, uh, these are the people that shall be then saved. So in case someone might, uh, might have been wondering what church unit and what church triumph and so we cannot expect uh, the church that is still uh, being purified uh, to act as though it has already been purified. So uh, let us remember to, to love one another, to pray for one another uh, with humbleness of heart uh, and humility and, and in exalting and praying for each other so that we can grow spiritually. I don't know if there's anyone who wants to Yes. Uh, thank you, Elder, uh, for taking that through. Uh, I'm adding something on the issue of the discouragements. Actually, the discouragements may not come or may not uh, be encountered by only the new entrants in the church. But even those who have stayed there for long. La, la, last time when we were discussing, we talked of the challenges uh, which we have had between the, the, the church members and then the leadership. And the, the, since uh, leaders sometimes are looked at as uh, those who are paving the way, as exemplary, and then sometimes when we find shortcomings in them and in their conduct, we feel so much discouraged. When we look at those uh, who have lived in the church longer than we are, and then there is some error which is done, we tend to feel so much discouraged. Sometimes our associates, see, see we find that maybe um, you may be faithful and holding on to the truth. And then the colleague, you expect also to meet the same standard is be falling away from those expectations. And they, those are discouragements which come onto our way. Sometimes you feel like, sure, well, can you also this happen in church? So it brings you a sense of feeling. So the devil takes advantage of those, and as discouragement is one of the greatest tools he has used since time memorial, 
we feel like ah maybe we are in a wrong place but surely we have been uh, we, have, we have been given the, the, the assurance that the church whereas it may not be pure christ is not is not ready to let you go of the church and all circumstances he is going to hold on to his church up to the end so we need to be consecrated day in actually uh, uh, it, uh, maybe you, you, you people you also advise me here. Uh, there is always something uh, which has been asked you in church, and then someone asks, if Christ comes right now, who feels is ready to go? And then he says, by show of hands, can you? <laughs> and then you will see people also will remain quiet, <laughs> not even put up their hand. And someone was like, you, you look at the church elder, and the church elder is not putting up their hands. You want to, even the church is not sure whether he's going or not. So sometimes, <laughs> those are some of the things which happen. I don't know, but surely uh, it will not be over until it is over. So we pray that he, Christ continues to strengthen our faith. Just as the prayer for the disciples was that he please, Jesus, strengthen our faith, strengthen our faith. I think the issue of transformation is going to continue until the last moment. Because there will be individuals whose turn point will be almost the living hour. So we pray that Christ uses us uh, from our weaknesses, He strengthens us to accomplish His work. And then when He comes, He finds us well. Thank you so much for listening to me. Yes. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone else who wants to make a comment. Yeah, in, in addition to what my brother had said, uh, really Christ should, should strengthen us because this is not something we can do by ourselves. We need his hope. You know, there, there's a verse which says, can an Ethiopian change his skin? <laughs> now, an Ethiopian can't change his skin. That doesn't mean that the skin can't be changed. <laughs> the verse is just telling us that the Ethiopian cannot, but God can. So he needs to do that. We need to ask him to strengthen us. Yeah, we can do whatever it takes, but we cannot strengthen ourselves without him. So we need to pray that he should strengthen us in our faith. Amen. Yes, I just also want to add, like, um, yeah, I think these are powerful messages, very strong, truly. Uh, we need the Lord's grace. Um, yes, uh, especially now considering what is happening around, we all know that even towards the end, uh, of course, there are a lot of things that are going to happen in the church, but at the same time, God expects us even to reflect more and more of his character. Um, but yeah, I would need the Holy Spirit that you may know how to deal with cases, the church, and how we look at each other and how we feel like each other. Like uh, It's really like a challenge now because there are several people who are always saying this and this is not correct, this and this. Not. Of course, it's true. Like Sometimes the situation will be bad, but maybe what we need is uh, wisdom from the Lord and, of course, the love of Jesus Christ that we may be able to address. Uh, these issues are uh, maybe in a way that shows love in a way also that shows that shows like respect of the church and the airing uh, we need more of God's spirit there uh, because I think that is one of the uh, things that is affecting um, uh, the spirituality of the church at the moment where the church sometimes becomes polarized uh, it is because like sometimes it's difficult for us to know how we can deal with each other or to live with each other because of some other maybe defects of character or maybe other things. So yeah, we really need uh, the love of God to abide in our hearts so that we may be able to live together even with those who are erring uh, and at the same time so that you may also help uh, each other to grow in grace. Uh, amen. 
Amen. Um, so we with that we we that's where we we, we end uh, our our lesson today so tomorrow same time we'll, we'll meet and we'll start on chapter five and then uh we meet again friday saturday sunday so for those who are joining us for the first time i think you, you might have heard that we 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 have, we have started these uh, discussions um so that we can help each other to grow spiritually and also to understand the, the seriousness of the time that we are living in uh, and what we ought to be doing just like the children of Issachar who understood the times and knew what israel ought to do so uh the plan is to finish the book last day events uh, uh, by december so that we can then start learning on <clears throat> on individual topics uh whose topics may arise as we study the, the book last day events like we've seen that we need to study about the great controversy motive uh and we also need to study method chapter 10 for this reason uh, from this discussion that we're having and uh with time also uh, more lessons will, will arise that we will discuss uh, post uh the book last day events so may god help us and let's pray for one another let's remember uh, our friends, our families back home and all those missionaries in various places. Uh, let's pray for them uh, as we pray uh, for ourselves. So with that, let us close our eyes and pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing of life. We thank you for you've reminded us that even though the church may be feebled, uh, you shall see it through uh, and the church shall finish strong uh help us to be part of that remnant uh that shall of that church militant that shall be changed into the church triumphant uh may your grace be upon us and our families remember our parents back home uh, bless them and remember each and every missionary in various places uh, be with them and strengthen their faith and knowing that soon and very soon uh, the son of man shall be revealed uh, we thank you lord now is very tired uh to sleep and others still uh, during the sabbath hours may you bless them and be with them in jesus name we pray amen okay so we meet tomorrow thank you everyone for coming uh may god bless you all oh, yes. uh, welcome you too. Uh, welcome my brother makarios yes i know makarios it means